everyone. Welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Now, today our guest is one of the biggest legends of Australia. He's kind of rose to the ranks in the last, you know, eight years, and I've become a big fan. I've made a few dinners of spag bowls and wore a bolo tie with this man doing his thing, but um, we'll go into it. He's got a construction management degree at Curtin University. Might even be looking to become an engineer. Um, he's a big Premier League fan. He's from, or he's lived in Toowoomba. Toowoomba, which is uh, out in Queensland, and um, also lived in Perth, was born in Khartoum, Sudan, and there's over 5 million people live there, which I was like just blown away, more than Melbourne. Um, obviously, he's done the Olympics and everything else. He's an 800-meter runner in the 2016 Rio, 2020 Tokyo, uh, silver medalist in the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Birmingham. We could go on, 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 but I will not go without any further ado, mate. I'm bringing the great man that is Peter Ball onto the podcast. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming. What an introduction. Thanks for having me man it's I'm been a trying, pleasure oh man it's so good I've, I've, I haven't really met you too much man but I feel like you know we're two peas in a pod us too you know we you didn't start playing to your or still didn't start running till you were 17 now I didn't start playing footy till I was 23 I had no idea what it was you were a big basketball man is that correct massive basketball I, I tell everyone I'm a great basketball player but I mean can you dunk I don't know right now, oh, but, but I did your hops, dude. Your I did hops used to dunk. High. yeah yeah I did used to dunk but I don't know you right have now. dunked before Definitely. Okay, yes. All right. Uh, for some reason, people think like Can you being dunk? able to dunk. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. I literally rest my hand. It's like yeah. the rims right there. It's like I'd be embarrassed if I couldn't. It means I can't get off the ground. Um, no, everyone seems to have it. Like if you can dunk, you can play basketball, you know? And I'm like, you know what? I could dunk and I was a terrible basketball player. So, um, I'll get into it though. Nag Mel Din. I don't know if a lot of people know this. That is your actual name. Yeah, that's my first name. So. Can, you, can you describe me how Peter came out of this whole thing? Is everyone now? I'll, I'll even go back, back even further what Negan yeah. Elden means. So um, I was born in Khartoum, like you said, and mm. um, our language there is Arabic. So Negmeldin, Nejmeddin, the pronunciation is an Arabic name. And yeah. Nejma actually means star. Star? Yeah, in Arabic. Oh, okay. And Din means religion, which will get wow. made into religion and I stuff know, like that. I know, we're going to jump into that for sure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, Nejmeddin and, and then obviously... Do you prefer to be called that? Or do you just kind of no, get No, no one actually calls me that. Not even my parents. It. Oh, really? No, not even my parents call me that. So they mostly call me Peter, but I mean, on my passport, it's got Najmed Din. So sometimes I feel yeah. a little bit of a fraud. Um, no, no. Do you, come on. So Najmel Din or Najmed Din? Najmed Din. Najmed Din. Najmed Din. Okay, yeah. so everyone out there, you better be saying it properly now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and like, then, you know, oh. growing up, we had different, several nicknames and yeah. What so. some of the nicknames you got? Speedster? Um, Superstar? Bowl. P bowl. P bowl is the most common one I use. Yeah, okay. see the Instagram handle. P what do you What do you want to be called whenever someone's uh, announcing you? Um, I mean, what, if you had a nickname, you just throw it out there, and you're like, "Hey, I'm Big Tex. I want people to call me Big Tex." You know, but unfortunately, uh, like Tex Walker's kind of taking that. I'm like a little bit pissed off about that. He's never from Texas, but it, it's a whole thing. But what would you What would you want to be called? Probably bowl or P bowl. P bowl. Yeah. I yeah. like it. Uh, now I want to ask you, there's a question I was going to ask later, but I'm going to bring it up now. Yeah. Um, and we're talking about nicknames, right? And whenever you get into a race, you know, some people like Michelle does like the the dance, you know, and yeah, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Like, yeah. Do you do anything? Have you ever done anything? I know you're a pretty relaxed guy. You kind of, you know, you're in your mindset and yeah, you're ready to calm. go. I, I like wearing the jewelry. I like wearing the necklace. Yes. I like wearing the things and the earrings. And- you're allowed to wear anything whenever you run? Uh, not watches. I don't think you can wear watches, but you can wear yeah, okay. everything else. If and- you had to wear a watch, what would it be? Uh, long jeans. <laughs> Sponsors will be happy with that one. Sponsors will be happy with that one. Um, so you can wear anything. So you, you can wear can, necklaces, you whatever, wear you whatever you want. Like, it doesn't really, matter. It doesn't whatever really makes matter. you feel confident. Yeah. Whatever makes you feel good. Do you ever feel, feel good, like, run good? Is it kind of like swimming? Do you kind of like shave your whole body and get a short haircut and stuff? Or like, nah, but I do like getting a fade before a race. Yes. Yeah. Gotta look That's, fresh. You gotta gotta to look, look fresh, man. You gotta look gotta look you're only fresh. there for like less than two minutes, so you want to look fresh. <laughs> 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 what a job. You just got four for two minutes. You just roll out of there. How good. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. There's a lot more obviously that goes into that. But um, so you go, you got the haircut. You get, do you have a necklace? Do you like, like, do you have a special necklace? Like, kind of any kind of superstitions you have to be wearing? No, nah, no superstition. I just kind of put a necklace on one of my necklaces. Um, Probably I wore this during the Commonwealth. Yeah, um, yeah. I wear the wristband. The wristband actually says, um, "It's pretty cool." It says, "Same distance, um, different track." Yeah, so okay. it's a great mentality. Like whenever you're racing, whenever you're racing, you're still racing 800 meters. Yeah, just, the track changes, the location changes, but. But still, you still got the, yeah. You still, you still, still got to run 800 meters. So. That's it, man. Everyone tries to like, you know, overthink you, it. It's oh, like, you, you know what? You're doing it, the yeah. same thing, you know? Like, you got to be on your zone and, and I've got that on most races. Any, um, any song? What's your pump up song, right? 
Man, I've been listening to Kanye. Kanye! <laughs> old school or new? Old school. Old school, school man. Yeah. We're talking about Dropout Album. Drop yeah. Out yeah. Album. yeah. <laughs> so don't talk about College Dropout's the one <laughs> yeah. before he went absolutely crazy. <laughs> I just, oh, that's actually yeah. like probably half that album's in my like <laughs> game day music. I'm not going to lie, mate. Um, we'll go, I want to ask you some quick fire questions and I'm going to get you something because I've heard from an inside source you like this little thing I'm going to gift you. Um, yeah. Who's the most influential person in your life? Um, man, I used to look up Muhammad Ali. So when yes. I was growing up, Muhammad Ali, number one. Legend. Absolute Everything. legend. On, you know, on the field, on the boxing ring and outside the, f- the boxing ring. His mentality. Ring. His yeah, mentality is ruthless and I love it. And he was like very well spoken outside of it, that's, I feel like too. It, and he's yeah. like, he was more than just an athlete. One it's of like the first poet. people that was like more than an athlete, I feel like. Yeah. I Expression. think he changed the whole game. It was awesome. Yeah. Love that. Okay. Uh, what gives you the most confidence? Is it the chain? Does uh-huh. the chain give you the most confidence? You put that on, it's <laughs> like, yo, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. I reckon, I reckon training. Yeah. Like- if you're not training, Practice no matter what chain, no matter what chain you're wearing, you get exposed. So mm. when when you're looking good at training. Um, I'm pretty confident. We're talking about practice. We're talking, talking about practice. practice. <laughs> We're talking about practice. <laughs> All right, favorite athlete. Who? Kobe Bryant. KB. Yeah. RIP. Kobe Bryant. Man, he was unreal. He was next level. I won't get into it because I'm going to start crying. Uh, favorite type of food. So, pasta. Pasta, spaghetti, bolognese, <laughs> you might say. You might say. I actually do like it. Um, but also smoked salmon. Smoked salmon. Yeah. Oh, a bit of tazzy salmon. Nice. So put a little glaze on it. What are we talking? What are we talking? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's it? Well, that's um, one. I'll give you this because I've... Oh. I'm actually excited to see it. Well, I've been told you're a big fan. <laughs> I've been told you? you're a big fan of the Orange Phantom, mate. So I know you've got I know, your coffee I know here. who told you that. I know you're a massive <laughs> fan of the Orange Phantom. I know it's a, it's a little secret that's now in the public, everyone. He does he does like his sweet his sweet drinks. Um, that's Cougars, right? I'm not going to release my... Hey, I'm not releasing who told me. I'm just saying I've got a little inside info that you might like an Orange Fanta, brother. Oh, man. Can I open this? Yeah, yeah. Dude, I don't care. It's not my van. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. You enjoy that. Hey, cheers, brother. Cheers. Good to have you on. <laughs> anyway, man, well, um, <laughs> I love this. Great start. Absolutely oh, elite start. Too. Um. Talk to me about everyone knows about your family, obviously. Massive support. I've got some amazing family. You do too. Obviously, everyone's seen it. And kind of your rise to fame and everything else, man. Can you give me a bit of a background? Obviously, you moved away from Sudan. You've come here and like, we'll get into a bit of the background, but my real interest I want to get into you is um, kind of the image of you being from Sudan and like being the representation of the Sudanese community and also talk about your religion and everything else that comes with it because I think that is so, so important today yeah. here in Australia is people not don't quite understand and just maybe don't have the information or haven't seeked out the information to quite understand where people come from and their kind of culture and everything else. So give me a little bit of background of where you, um, obviously we talk about where you're from, but like kind of what life was like, you know, moving from place to place from Perth over to Queensland and, or sorry, Queensland to Perth and yeah. from Sudan over there. Give me a bit of background. I'll start, I'll start probably with family and I mean, everyone's so in Tokyo, the family getting around it and they fell in love with the family, fell in love with the whole story. Mm. But the reason we're that close is because I guess you just said it when we from Sudan to Egypt, Egypt to Toowoomba, Toowoomba to um, Toowoomba to Perth. And the only consistent thing through all that journey is like the people you're kind of moving around with. And those yeah. those are the guys in the living room and a few other extras. How many are there? I've got four brothers. Four brothers. So pretty competitive. Four, yeah. And then I've got a sister. Were you the sister. best athlete of the four? No, I actually no. I was, I was third. Third? Well, you were not even not. second on the pecking order. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Wow. Think See, my... if, that, if you ask that question to me, like, nah, <laughs> brothers are shit. Oh, it's all me. It's all me, baby. <laughs> but it made me train so much okay. harder. I yeah. Think Older my, brothers? My younger brother, uh, the youngest one, is probably the most athletically talented. Oh, is he? Is he could play footy. Is it, how old is he now? He's 20 now, but he ain't playing in his football. Oh. <laughs> Come on, man. I started at 23. Still got a chance. It's, it's still got time. It's still got time. <laughs> still got time. Yeah, you didn't tell him that. Still got time. Hey, I'll send him a he's message. Got, I'll give him some little it. like Oz kick stuff so you can sort it out. And, uh, my second oldest brother, he's always doing well at anything, you know, basketball. He was killing high jump. Like this dude was scissor kicking. Yeah. Like, 185 and stuff like that. I have I mean, no idea. 185. Like at school, I jumped like 180 and this dude was jumping like 185 and he couldn't even cross me up. So you got him. Uh, he's smart. probably- Second best, but my younger brother could do everything. Like, yeah, okay. he's a bit bigger. All around athletes. And all, I'm sad to say I'm the shortest at home. So all, You're the shortest? They're all taller oh, too. Oh, man. So, yeah. High know. complex. Oof. Yeah. So, you just roll around. You just kind of like feel like the little brother of everyone. <laughs> yeah. I love that I'm like the little brother, but I'm the tallest of the three. So, then I kind of feel like I have something over them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you played a bit of basketball growing up. 
Now you yep. played that out in Perth and then that was yeah. kind of like the sport you got into before and you're an NBA fan, I'm assuming. Massive NBA fan. The old Lakers. Massive Lakers fan and, yep. you know, Kobe fan. Ever been to a Lakers game? Never been to Not an yet. NBA game. Not yet. Not yet. I mean. I might know a connect. Yeah, that's what I'm I might know a connect, bro. I know you can make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try my best. <laughs> um, all right, so you, you play a bit ball. Tell us about that. What was that like? Ball is fun, man, because um, it was like a team sport, so... Mm. And I went to school and I went to school on scholarships. So playing basketball, um, you just play with your friends. You, you can trash talking ball, like running. You can't even trash talk. Can you not trash talk? Oh, talk well, well, what are you going to do? Like in the middle of a race, say to someone something, you oh, probably run out of breath. And, as soon as I get on the mall, I'll, I'll look to the left. Yeah, you piece <laughs> yeah. of shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably the only time you can trash talk. Oh, hundred percent. Basketball is longer and you can just, it's just fun, yeah. man. You play with the boys and whatnot. Still play it like a little bit here and there? Or? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I still shoot around. Just Huge. around Richmond actually. Oh, we should be telling people where we live, mate. <laughs> where we're at the moment, but <laughs> no, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Um, no, okay. So, so you like the basketball aspect. You like kind of like the team sport and everything else, right? So, yeah. whenever you moved to running, was that something you had to get used to? Is like just this mentality? Because I've I've talked about previously is like kind of tennis and running and all these kind of individual sports and the mentality that has to come with it and the confidence you have to instill in yourself and everything else is totally different from any other sport. And I feel like sometimes that's almost the hardest hurdle to get past. Yeah. Like, how is that, like, mentality? Like, do you go in and you just kind of... I feel you're pretty laid back, dude, man. Like, you're good vibes, you're happy, you're always kind of, like, in a good mood. I'm so laid back to the point that when I first started running, man, I used to... Because you had to do little athletics and you had to do, like, a combination of, like, six different events. Yeah, yeah. I used to just jump the fence and go home. What? I I did not like waiting that long. Oh, because it'd be all day, eh? So you just got to be there all day. So I was like, nah, I'm not coming. And then I just decided to do seniors instead, which you can rock up to a race and then go home. Yeah, yeah. So I, so I didn't do little athletics. I went straight to senior athletics because you could just go race. Yeah. And, dip, and then be done. And You're like, yo, I've done, done my thing. Yo, I won this. I'm out. Like <laughs> Training was so hard. Like just running laps and laps and laps. Yeah. Do you kind of like, do you, do you put in headphones when you like train or like, do you nah. just, are you just in your own head? Just in your own head. Because I don't like people that swim, you know, you go into this like swimming motion and like you kind of keep going back and forth and you just cut. You kind of come in this like flow stage, you're just thinking about other things. You're not even like, like I've seen you running. Like you ran past my house the other day, man. I'm <laughs> serious. This man floats on air. Like it doesn't even look like he's touching the ground. Like me, it is like every step's like bang, <laughs> bang, bang. Like it looks just absolutely dreadful. Where you just like, I don't know, you just float, man. Like you just, you just look like a runner. Like just now when natural. I first, when I first started running, my head was back. Everything was looking really terrible. So you've had to fix the posture you had to and fix like everything, everything that comes technique, with it. Yeah. Training and shout out to the, what's day. the what's the coach? Shout out to him. Justin Rinaldi. Justin Rinaldi. Jay Rinaldi. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he's we worked on that. Changed everything up in that sense. And like, have you noticed like a big difference in your times once you actually change that? Yeah. I was improving quick. So, yeah. so was it like time. this big? Because I, I remember when I started, f- first started playing football. Mm. It's like this massive curve. Like you hit this, you get the proper teaching. Yeah. And you yeah. hit this massive like kind of and curve. And elevate. then you somewhat like kind of, doesn't like go as steep, but you're still getting better day by day. Well, now it's been... You know what? Eleven years since I started running, and wow, when yeah. I first my first race was like two or five, and now I run one forty four. One forty four. So yeah. it's just like form escalate, and like in the first five years, my first Australian team was the Olympic Olympic yeah. team. So like it's crazy just rocking up to to an international event, the Olympic team, and you're used to running like school carnivals before. Yeah. That. So it's just like, was anyone you looked at was like, man, I'm like training next to this dude? Yeah, man, it was crazy. I was I was at the games and. And bro, you see everyone. I th- I saw Usain Bolt. I saw oh, really? Tony <sighs> Parker, Patty Mills. I saw all yeah. those athletes, and I'm just like, you know, was, the funny thing is, I was more. I knew more the basketballers than the runners. I didn't even know who I was mm. running against because I was so new. Yeah, but yeah. I knew all the basketball players, and I wanted to meet them. But the runners, I had no idea who they were. Did you, you know? go so, did you at least go so high? To the yeah 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 because yeah. they, they know you now obviously yeah, yeah. like by early days like just getting yeah. in they'd be I like went, oh, I went got photos there. everything said hello you know took advantage of everything <laughs> and now you're returning the favor to everyone else <laughs> now Patty Mills is like yo nah. hey Bo come over man nah. yo, my kids love you like <laughs> nah, I still go Patty Mills one of the realest dude I met in the game unreal man the team so, such a good fellow yeah know, he stayed the same from the first games I met him till till Tokyo like five years later so it's pretty cool. Yeah, and um, to the Olympics side, man, do you have any kind of memorabilia from the Olympics? Like, if I went to the Olympics, man, like, just the kit is cool. Yeah. Like, and it's unique. Like, no one else in the world has it, right? Yeah. Like, this kit's sick. And then, like, people get, like, the tattoos of the Olympic rings and yeah. everything else. Like, is there anything that, like, is stuck with you and you're, like, take that as, like, a memento from the Olympics? Pro- you but, you mean, you've been to two. So, like, yeah, yeah. from both, you know, and they're very different experiences, probably, like, from Rio to Tokyo. Probably the stories, especially from the mm. first one. Like, um, like... I remember how excited I was and, and this sports psychologist told me like, just try to stay calm. 
conserve your energy. And I was like, yeah, man, I'm laid back. I can do that. Yeah. And then you get to the Olympics and and um you see like Clay Thompson and you see Usain Bolt and then you see like food is free at the Olympic Games. And, <laughs> That'd be my and, biggest yeah, impression. That's, I was like, yeah. that's, you could go to the food court whenever you want. You could wake up at 2 a.m. and just go there. McDonald's is free there. Um, I tell this story quite a bit, but I got three haircuts because it was free. Yeah. While I was at the Olympic Games. As you would. Yeah. <laughs> was good. Everything it's was like just there. NBA bubble was like and a bar was like the number one thing they wanted. So like you remember all those stories and then you go to Tokyo, although it was like COVID and you see mm. like how much growth through it. And that, I didn't get no tattoos or anything like that, but I remember those stories and the first people you met. And I think that's really cool. What's the Olympic Village like? Wild. Wild. Like Tokyo, Rio. It's more wild than Tokyo because of course we- but Yeah, you'd be locked you know, down in Tokyo. Locked down. Like- Crazy. But what's it, what's it, give us a bit of an idea. Like you walk into the village, is there like just a cafe that's like anything and everything you want? So, like food, what's it like? And then the people, a, is it all separated? It's, like a, it's like small city, you got buses running, you got food courts and you got like countries everywhere. So you got all buildings. Mixed. Yeah, yeah, all, all yeah, We'll mixed. talk about Rio because Tokyo was its own thing. Yeah. Like obviously with yeah. COVID, but like Rio but is what everyone would kind of know mixed. for. So you got all buildings yeah. and then- at the end, the parties, you can just decide to choose whatever party you wanted to go to. So if you wanted to go to South American party, was well, there any country that was South the American, best? Uh, probably South America. South America. Oh, that's a whole like, country. Yeah. That's a continent. Like, like uh, Brazil is good. Brazil course, would be good. I feel like games, they do it right. Yeah. They do it right. And then, um, and Jamaica. Jamaica would be so good. Those guys are just wild. Loose, yeah. loose units. Oh yeah. my God. And any Caribbeans, they're just crazy. Just like, hey man, this is my time to shine. I'm going to enjoy my life. Like, this is it. <laughs> That's Unreal. it, yeah. So that was fun, man. So is there any like, so we go to the Olympic Village, bro. I'm, I'm so interested in this because I always wanted to go. And I always want, like, I don't care if I'm a water boy. Like, hey, yeah. next Olympics, you man, like, if you need a water guy, I'll come all the way out for you, man. Don't worry about it. Um, but there's like, just so much like, I guess, stuff that happens and like people that mix into different things. And like, because you obviously, you know, you do the world's like sprints or like running and all that kind of stuff. Like you would have friends from other countries already that you probably yeah, see yeah. there. And that would kind of be like a somewhat of a reunion, you know, of like yeah. being able to see people you, you know, actually, rather than just like random, random athletes random. from all over. Well, not the first Olympics, so I didn't know anyone, but the second Olympics, like the first Olympics, yeah. I made so many friends. And then like every year now I finish my European season, I decide to go on holiday on one of my friend's hometowns. So like yeah. one time I went oh, to I Luxembourg. Like imagine, I didn't even know what Luxembourg was until yeah. this dude I raced with, he was from Luxembourg and we just went to Luxembourg for a week and we spent there. Oh, it was sick. Best time I had and I didn't even know Luxembourg City existed. Yeah. Last time. Like it was just amazing, you know? And then Paris, I've got a good friend from Paris and he's he's crazy. He's like, he just gets after it and always go to Paris or France, spend time with him. It's, so it's cool. Like whenever you visit those cities, you actually have people, you know? It's, yeah. it's, it's nice like that. It's the best place you've been. Because now I feel like you've probably traveled a bit of the world now. Mm. Like you've seen a bit of the world. You've been, you've moved out of the most isolated city in the world, Perth. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you broaden your horizons a bit, let's yeah. say. You've spread your wings around the world. Yeah. What's your favorite place you've been to? We've got uh, a favorite experience, place you've been to for an experience and favorite yeah. place you've like seen from like just, you know, like nature slash city, all that kind of stuff. Oh, nature. Because it's all about who you go with, I feel like. Yeah, exactly. They make the experience the, the different. The people make the experience Yeah, right? 100%. Oh, man, Barcelona. Because when, when you go to Barcelona, it's completely season off. Mm. And those guys know how to enjoy their time. They're like- Las Ramblas. Yeah. And you go through like some of the back streets and stuff. You different parties, like, different yeah. food, and you're out late. Tapas. Less. And, just, mm. and it's a beautiful city too. So if you wanted to do sightseeing and whatnot. So I think Barcelona was probably my favorite. Yeah. And they're completely opposite to that. I love South Africa. We went to South Africa and we went like, a, we went on a run one time and hey, we just started seeing zebras. We started seeing animals oh. running behind us. Zebras, like, you said it's zebras, hold <laughs> up. Yo, you said zebras are zebras, man. You become yeah, an American. Said, like what, what's going on? <laughs> I've been waiting for someone else to say that for seven years. <laughs> I'm amazed here. <laughs> hold on, okay. Yeah. So we're in South, Af South, Af South Africa. Sorry, we South Africa. You were Johannes in- Around Johannesburg. Beautiful, man. Yeah. I wanted to go there for the World Cup. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You go to Kruger National Park? No, we didn't do no uh, national parks. Man, we, far out. That place is just next to the level. <laughs> yeah, you've been there? Oh, I haven't been there. My friend who lived around this, uh, the corner from me, he's been trying to get me there for about 20 years. Definitely. And it's next level, man. Like yeah. he just would, oh, some of the stories he has is just insane. Just like lines out the back door. Um, <laughs> just like different world, man. Just a different world. But we love it. We love it. Um, we'll go into a bit of uh, you personally, I want to talk into, we've, we've had a little bit off track. We've gone through a few different things. You're enjoying your Fanta, 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 whatever you call it nowadays. Um, now your religion, I think this is so important for people now because I've been to an Eftar dinner. Uh, yeah. I do this every single year with the U S consulate. And, um, I think it's important for people in Australia who sometimes not necessarily saying they're ignorant, but they can learn more 
about this. Uh, can you give us a bit of a background on your religion and maybe some of the practices that you kind of do on a yearly basis? That's the most important things in the in the religion you practice. Yeah. So um, Sudan. So my both of my parents Muslims. Yeah. Born Muslims. Can I, say, uh, can I ask this? Muslim? Do you say it not Muslim? Muslim. Muslim. That's the proper Islam, way to say it. Yeah. That's the first thing we're gonna start off the bat for people like say Muslim, <laughs> not Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, that's that's our religion. I think like you said, I think your belief is really important whether mm. you know, whether you're Muslim, whether you're Christian, whether whatever you are, whatever you grew up with. So yeah. and that's what we grew up with. So it's it's pretty strong. And of course I've been to heaps of Tar dinners. Um one of the best people I know is um Basha Huli. He's yeah, legend. I, he's he's a legend, like he's a great great mentor and and he always emphasized like um, how important it is to be a good person outside the sport. And then, yep. and then that's kind of like what we believe in. We believe in family. We believe in, obviously, believe in God. Mm. Um, and I think growing up with that, it keeps you, it keeps you grounded. Yeah. Especially, as, yeah. especially as an athlete, as, as you grow and you develop, there's all it's these rock. new- It's a what you yeah, are. It's like a foundation. All these new you know? like, start yeah. coming out, all these new distractions, whatever it is. So if you have, if you have a foundation, like, like your religion and your belief system and you're pretty strong or your value system, mm. it keeps you kind of grounded because then, and it, ha- it actually helps me become a better, better person and better athletes in general. Yeah, so, 100%. Now, so, Ramadan? Ramadan, yep. You do that? I'll do that sometimes and then sometimes it's really hard. It's so tough, isn't it? Yeah. The challenge with running is sometimes it lands, or yep. always lands during the season. Because oh, like Basher would do it during AFL season. Basher's unreal. It's next yeah. level, man. I was like yeah. so impressed by it. I was like, man, how are you even like functioning? Like it's insane. But Basher. it's like this belief. Like you have this belief yeah, yeah. that this is the right thing. And, and, like, and I, I've heard him speak and some of the some of the best games he's had is one of his fasting. Mm. Like, it's crazy, eh? Like, like imagine how, how much strength he's drawing from that. Oh, it's, it's unreal. It's phenomenal. So have you, you ever done, have you ever done racing while you're doing Ramadan at the same time? Never raced, but I've done training. Done training, yeah. And I've honestly trained pretty pretty damn good yeah yeah it was just like crazy eh? level yeah Man, i love that you do, F, do you do iftar every year yeah so i yeah. always try to get to a few especially around melbourne there's there's heaps going I on you get you, yeah you can get you to the u.s consulate look get you around yeah. hey it's a few combinations yeah might get that little los angeles lakers connect there you never know you never know my brother you never know um, i'll do that <laughs> yeah no seriously I, no I'm, we're gonna do it we're gonna take a photo at some point in our lives at a lakers facility at the staples or crypt, maybe it's crypto.com now i think <laughs> i think they've changed the name of it yeah. and we're gonna be sitting there with lebron being like hey yo homies <laughs> us three we hang out all the time best mates um <laughs> we'll go okay we'll go back to your family now mm. you've come from Sudan um, flood there you've gone to uh, Toowoomba how did that happen how do you get to Toowoomba of all places I mean I didn't even know what Toowoomba was I, um, I still don't I, I think <laughs> a, a lot of people actually don't know what Toowoomba is like when I explain my story and then I get to Toowoomba everyone's like they're like oh where's Toowoomba like, what was it, like, how do you end up landing there of all places like um, so I, I, my dad had family there oh so, okay yeah so we weren't completely alone either so we had family yeah. there and that's why we migrated there. And then at the time, I think that was 2004, yeah. there's heaps of Sudanese migrating to Australia and heaps of them got sent to Toowoomba. So, and so Toowoomba was f- full of basically a lot so of- So you own community there, there almost. Yeah, we had heaps of community there. Oh, yeah, cool. And, and then you're stranded by the same community and then you went to school and then you're stranded by Australian community. So you yeah. kind of- kind of never really lost your culture mm. and then you're learning and building a new culture at the same time. So it's perfect. That's Toowoomba cool. It's awesome. And she, it's one of my favorite places, I think. You ever listen to country music while you're up there? I think so. Who told that? Nickelback and Nickelback is not <laughs> country to, music. I used to listen to Nickelback all the time. <laughs> hey, I, I write Nickelback. He, yeah. gets a, he gets a hard, hard run at it. But I think Nickelback's ain't too bad. <laughs> Nickelback ain't too bad. Now, I thought you were gonna say maybe Garth Brooks or Tim McGraw or something on nah, those lines. Nah, but nah, Nickelback, nah. if that's as country as you get, Toowoomba has not gained its that's roots too hard into you. All right, that so is, that is as country as I got there. Oh gosh, I love that Nickelback is as country as it gets for you. Oh man, my people back home be rolling their grave. <laughs> <laughs> people in Texas would be like, oh my gosh, there's so much to learn. Uh, that's gold. How do you lead from there to getting to Perth? Uh, so we spent four years there. And then and then again, we had family move. We had, my dad had family in, in Perth and yeah. Toowoomba was small and Toowoomba yeah, was actually quite cold. Uh, in Queensland? Yeah. like Really? Because it was high, like it was really cold. Oh, high altitude. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, which, well, it's not like I had a choice, but my family was moving and I said, all right. And yeah. I didn't know, but you were young, like you were quite young, young so like, like, there's no. I was like in your eight or something, and then moving yeah. all the way across the other side of, I couldn't think of anything worse at the time because you just moved to this new you place. Just you made find, friends and you, like you learned yeah. English and you made new friends and. So you had to learn English in in Australia. Yeah, 
Far out. And then you're just moving to another place after four years. It was like, man, all the connections you've built, all the people you've met. Yeah. It felt terrible there. But then now look at it as like the best thing that happened. Yeah. Because of where you are right now. You still speak two languages fluently? Oh, oh man, I'm losing. You're losing it. I'm losing it. Do you speak English to your family though? No, I speak, I speak Arabic. Yeah, okay, yeah. My, I speak Arabic to my mom. Yeah. Um, Love that. I, I feel like that's important. Like, yeah. you know, keep a bit of the like, I think the that's what I'm losing because like, I've yeah. been in Melbourne for six years. Yeah. So I'm not so using it very often, yeah. often. But the funny thing is, I use it more overseas. Really? Yeah, because like Arabic spoken, there's so many Syrians overseas. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. There's, you know, like Arabic spoken everywhere, Algerians. Um, so you go back over there and it's like kind of a refresher of the language and like talking to people. people and again. I've got heaps of guitar friends. Yeah. Um, so I get to practice a little bit. Yeah. But not as fluent as I used to be for sure. Uh, it's impressive, man. I know like minimal Spanish and I try to pull it out any chance I get. <laughs> I've got some Like I got my Guzmaz and Gomez and I'm like, hola, man, amigo. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> it's like, I think anyone that speaks Spanish that works here. <laughs> so, Do you speak any other language? Uh, uh, Spanish a little bit. So I'm, I'm from Texas, so it's like right yeah, next to Mexico. So, so like obviously Spanish is spoken there. So yeah. there's a lot of crossover as far as um, cultures there. So there's a, there's a lot of Spanish speaking people in Texas. So that's yeah. kind of like the one that I speak. But uh, cool. no habla muy espanol. Habla espanol muy bien. So you know more Spanish than I do, <laughs> bro. So you don't even speak it strange. Oh, no sé, no sé. That's, uh, <laughs> that's the one I got. Necesito la baño. You know, la mesa. <laughs> I got little things here and there. Can't speak it fluently, but I can understand it somewhat. Um, uh, we'll go to the Sudanese community, mate. Now, you have kind of rose to stardom. I want to talk about, well, actually, we'll start about this first. So uh-huh. rise to stardom, right? Like, it's all yeah. kind of happened very quickly somewhat, right? Yeah. Like, it's, I mean, in the last eight years, life has changed quite a bit, you could say. Yeah. Now, how have you handled, you know, eyes now upon you and like not being able to go out in public anymore and like just kind of fitting in and all that kind of stuff. Like how has the transition been? Oh, I think to be honest, I think that's why I probably like uh, enjoy overseas a little bit more because yeah. you, you kind of just fly under the radar. Yeah. 100%. So especially off season, you just want to do it overseas and just fly under the radar. Uh, the attention, man, I think it just comes with the sport. It's all part it, of it. It's just yeah. part of it. Like you can't part have- of the job. It's yeah, 24-7 job, 365, yeah, whether the people realize it or not, like yeah, it is what it is. It just comes with it. So you got to embrace it when you can. And and if you- Hey, but there's it. good things too. I mean, I know you were just recently at a September club. <laughs> yeah. I hear the grand final. Grand you final. bet my girl Delta. <laughs> a little jealous. Not going to lie. I know she chunked you the fall on socials. <laughs> Come on, Delta. Anyway. Um, yeah, of course. There's great things to it. Yeah, and, there's positives to it. And too. I mean, I got a free PlayStation 5. That's a, oh, that's a great positive to big it. Big gamer. Big gamer. I what do you got? What's the best one? FIFA 2K. FIFA. So you're a sports gamer. Now, you do you have like a handle that's public or should we just keep this private? Do you have like a, is it Twitch? Is that any, what it is any, nowadays? Any, Twitch? Anyone that wants smoke on FIFA. Oh! <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> What's that smoke? What is it? What's that smoke? Uh, P-Ball 800. Oh, PSN. mate, you're about to get absolutely murdered I'm on gonna FIFA. I'm smoked. Oh, you're about to get like, what was his name? Ninja? You're like ninja. the ninja of like FIFA just hitting you up and you're like, Sorry, oh, I was playing the other day and I got lessons. done up. So, but yeah, we should get one. Of, we should get, um, we should get Mac in here. Get him on uh, FIFA. Yeah, and get him on FIFA. Yeah. yeah. FIFA 23 is coming out. Huge. I don't play 2K as much now. But yeah, okay. I play, I play a bit of FIFA. Uh, it's so different nowadays. Everything's online. Everything. So do you have like all your mates who play from like overseas and stuff that I like, yeah. could play online and stuff? Yeah, I play yeah. online. That's yeah. so good. Which is good. And you just keep up with everyone through that. Exactly. Yeah. And you just put your microphone on. You're having a chat and you're playing. It's like you're almost hanging out. Yeah. Even though you're not. Yeah. I know kids these days. I'm telling you, <laughs> like I never had that. We had the N64 and like you got all the bikes out <laughs> the front. You don't play you know, now. And, Nah, I don't, man. I've I've kind of passed. I've gone past that. You know, I'm still yeah. trying to work an iPhone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> then we'll go. We'll upgrade from there. Um, <laughs> no, nah, it's, it's been good. We'll go. <laughs> I'm just embarrassing myself now. Um, we'll go through a representation. So, so yeah, sorry. You, you come to nowadays where you, you're very well known around. Like mm-hmm. you're very well known. And I think it's not because of just your athletic ability. Don't get me wrong. That's impressive beyond belief. But yeah. I think your personality is very like relatable to people. People love people who are very, you know, high energy. They're very positive. They're very, you know, happy in that sense. And like, I feel like your energy is very positive energy. Like there's, yeah. Yeah. certain people that give off that energy and you're one of them yeah um, is that something you've just always had yeah man And but at the same time like you get disappointed after after a race and whatnot. Yeah. And but I feel like you would go like you would if you would lose a race right after the race you'd be like upset and then a day later you'd be like how an amazing experience that was yeah and then you'd just be like what else can you do like get upset for the whole yeah. 
the old thing. Like the race is already gone. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna change anytime soon. You just move you to the just, next thing in life. Gotta, you're like, you no, keep trying move. to get better. Yeah, what? especially like imagine we if I was racing in Barcelona, for instance, mm. and I had a bad race, like of course you're disappointed for a day, but like Bro, you're in Barcelona, so you might as well go, <laughs> go check out the place. Who would have guessed from Toowoomba to Barcelona? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? Same, same, same right? Same, same. <laughs> same, same, yeah. So all of that. And um, yeah, I think it's just, again, it's a combination of your beliefs, your culture, everything consistent that I've kept I've kept along the way. I've like not changed. Yeah. And and that's probably a good way, like you say, have has anything changed? Nothing really changes because you've kept the same thing. Like, I mean, there's so much more tension, but you still mm. still remain the same. Your person. foundation's the same. It's the same thing. Like, things might change here and there, but like your family, yeah, like, the rock, religion, everything. Things you else can't control, the, like um, the hype and the tension. Mm. You can't really control that, but like you can control your foundation and whatnot. Did you ever feel the hype? Like I know at Commonwealth Games, you recently were there, and I was bleeping, I was getting. Around I love the it though. You know what? I was eating bowl and I was wearing <laughs> yeah, a bowl yeah. tie. I was absolutely <laughs> behind. I was like, "This is it." I love it because, especially, you see a lot of people. Um, I've got a lot of like close friends, and and they say, "Man, they're building so much hype. Is is that creating too much pressure on you?" Mm. So no, nah, I actually love it because I want to. Yes. I want to. I want to like live up to it. And, yeah. And like. And like this is what we're in it for, like exactly. Yes, I make love it, that make it. You gotta oh. make it mean so much, and and now the key is to build like Tokyo as big as as the last two. And credit to credit to Australia, like they've mm. been getting around that. You know, Tokyo, like a, that's probably one of the most memorable fourth. Like yeah. I always said, like I'd hate to come fourth because that's like one one away from an actual material medal, of like an right actual medal. Yeah, but it was memorable fourth. So. And then oh, but you, I mean, like, you know the stats better than I would, but I mean, yeah. like, no one had ever done that before, I feel like. Yeah, and then it's changing, it's changing the sport. Like, the 800 meters now, people- It's a thing now. It's a thing. It was yeah. never a thing, like, when I was racing. You're the face of, like, track and field now. I don't want to sit here and, like, pump you up too much, mate, <laughs> yeah. but, like, you are- Now, keep it up, keep it up. Yeah, actually, I like this, I like this, I like this. <laughs> yeah. um, no, nah, you know, honestly, though, like, you are now the face of it, and, like, you've had this amazing experience, and some amazing stuff has come from it, and it's like, yeah. you know, and I think it is a credit to yourself and the attitude you have and, like, the positivity you give to other people and that's why people relate to you and they're like man yeah. I want to see someone do well I want to see someone who's like doing good things for the community and who's out there representing things in the right way to be at the top of the game and to be representing Australia on a bigger level yeah and I think that's the key you got to still be at the top of the game um, because hype hype and attention does not equate to performance at the end of the day yeah. so you still got to get down and you got to still down, get down and train and whatnot so and I credit myself probably because we spoke about this with my coach and my manager and saying like the second year is always the hardest because like after Tokyo, you've had such a high, you've yeah. built up so high. And now you have expectations. You have expectations, you have pressure. And I was like, I love when people say that. So I'm like, I want to show you like, it's, it's, it's no- I love this mentality, it's, it's, yes. It's, yeah, it's, it's not a big deal. And um, yeah. even like going to Paris this year, running a strand record, I was like, yeah. man, like I wanted to do that. 144? 144 flat. Huge. I did, didn't got under that 144. Let's go. Uh, and, then, and then during the Commonwealth Games, man, I was chilled. I was Mate, you had that qualifier, oh, that heat, that heat, and you were just like cruising, and you absolutely was, cruising, cruising yeah. through just, the end. I just felt in shape and oh. like the crowd and everything. And you just, you know, you know when you're playing a really good game and you just mm. like in the zone, flow state. Yeah, you're just flowing. Oh, yeah. just be on air. Yeah. It's something like, and I think I wish everyone in the world could experience at least one experience of that. that yeah, of just being like, man, everything's everything's working, mm. everything's cranking the right way, like everything's going well, like just perfection. That is like the, that is bliss. That's it really the is best like moments. bliss during those races in Tokyo. That's how I felt, mm. and like even you, I was slowing down at the end for the heats and the semis, and man, you're just feeling effortless. Yeah, and once you can get to that. If you can do, the key is to try to learn to do that repetitively. Yeah. It's not a fluke and now I've proven I can do it every time. So. Yeah, you should, man. Like, and when I, get, when I get on the line, I'm just like, you know, I'm You've I'm done the work, go. you're ready. I've done the work. I'm, I'm not yeah. worried about anyone else. So yeah. Can I ask you, whenever you run a race, right? Yeah. Describe the perfect race. Now, I think there's a lot of people that know what running is, but like there's yeah. a lot of meticulous things that happen whenever you go yeah. into a run. Like, is it the f most important thing off the blocks this is the most important thing, like kind of maybe trailing someone, getting a little bit of like draft off someone then like in the last hundred going. Body, like how, what's the perfect like race for you? Firstly, body language and then- Body language? Body language, yeah. You wow, can, okay. You can literally, the races are race bad and the races are race good. You could see it from the start line, just from your really? body language, yeah. Can you see other people's body yeah, language too and being like, I'm in his head, I love literally, I'm in his head right now. I was now. literally in Tokyo and uh, this is might contradict because everyone says you're so humble, but mm -hmm. I was literally in Tokyo in the courtroom 
And I'm like, nah, that dude is not going to perform today. Of that. And because you just see body language, you see people yeah. being nervous and because it means so much. So, um, and I was just chilled the whole time mm. and I was just ready to go. So body language. And then, you know, that first 200 is, is pretty important. You get out hard and you just kind of look around. Would your pace in the first 200 be faster than like the rest of the 600? Yeah. So you yeah. try the okay. first 200 should be about. Are you trying to get seconds. to the front of the pack kind of thing? Trying to get top three. I'm not trying to yeah. be at the front, but I'm trying to slot in behind the leader. Or the second. Yeah. I'm not trying to be at the back back either. But you, if someone's running two, would you know if someone's like running two or three seconds quicker than they should be? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, so like so if, you're going to like, if you're 24 seconds, it's pretty relaxed. But if you're running faster than that, then you're stretching yeah. and you're letting it all out or whatever, 22 seconds, but no one really does that. Uh, mm. And then you can kind of see, you see the clock, you just look on your left and you, you can see- so the, the clock's clock. all around the same. Yeah, you, you see pay the clock at the 200 yeah, and then yeah. the clock at the 400 and you see it. And then when, when I see like, when I'm slotting in and I'm top three, yeah. I'm just I'm just chilling. You know, like you have spot. to switch off and then the 300, that's when it's time to go. And when, I, when you kind of go out, it's like, yeah, I've got this race. You kind of know if you got the race or not. Before, like within 400 meters, you reckon within, you know whether or not you've got the race. Within 300, 300 meters, I know. Wow. Within 300 meters, I definitely know. Yeah. Wow. 300 meters in, you're like, just, I know where pounce. I'm going to land. If you're doing one thing. of these, looking around and like your head's yeah, back, yeah. then you're kind of not going to. Nah. But when, when you kind of just go, yeah, you know. So you get to 300, it. you know, confidence yeah, level is probably know. pretty high. Yep. You're like, I'm about to dominate this. Yeah, even when I broke the rest of record, yeah. um, I was sitting on the back back, but I was like. And, at you know, 300? Yeah, I was sitting on the back. Yeah, okay. And I came back, at, but I knew. I had heaps to go. You knew everyone else was going to yeah. blow up and you're just going to go right past me, them. I got second, but I had to go through everyone, but I knew I was going to run a pretty good time. Far out. Yeah. This is interesting. So whenever you get to like, so you go 300, right? You know exactly who's going to win. Now what's your yeah. game plan past 300? You get to the 400 mark, you've done a full lap. Full lap? Yeah. It's 400 meters. Yeah. yeah. So you get to the, back to the starting spot. Yeah. And you've gone, okay, I know kind of where I sit. I'm looking to try to be in the top three. Yeah. And then do you kind of pick your pace up from there? Yeah. Or do you don't want to get boxed in. The coming from four to five is probably the most important one. Yeah, because everyone's trying to come out wide and trying to get from the curve. So you're going yeah, the next straight the curve, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got so you. you yeah, you want to be. I'd never stay like on the rails, which is on the inside. Yeah. I stay a little bit on the outside, and okay. I kind of look back. I look a lot because if you kind of someone comes cuts you out and then they all cut you out, then you're stuck on the rails. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you ever got run into the rails, like pushed off the like off the track into like? Nah, the, I've, no, I've never been in that. Um, no, I, that happened to me in high school all the time. <laughs> I was always that guy, just like, and there was gutters so next to it, so like twist ankles, like just <laughs> spikes going into like gray, that's, like gray. That's and, a DQ straight away. Oh, so is it really? That's a DQ. Wow, yeah. even if someone like kind of like maneuvers you off. Yeah, you can protest, but that's a DQ. Wow, I didn't know that. It's counted as you're running less because you're on the because you're on the inside, yeah. even if it is like in this hundred meter straight. Yeah. Okay, so you get to you get to five hundred, you finish the straight now you're going on to the next curve yeah what's your mentality there you're going i need to be top three at this point yeah yeah definitely. and form 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 and just stay relaxed do you feel like your left side's a bit stronger because you like kind of always kinda taking leaning. left turns you know yeah, yeah, like for sure. <laughs> for sure yeah because yeah, you're okay. always running like it's funny you ask that because um when you get treatment one side always is more tired than the yeah other because you're always running that it makes sense it'd be yeah. good to have like a longer right leg than left leg <laughs> Stuff like that, you know. Like, what's the idea of body? You know, I want two inches less on my left leg. Um, okay, so you get to so you get to five hundred, you get to six hundred, round that curve, you're top three. Now you you got two hundred meters left. Yeah. Now what's you now you're on the last straightaway. No? Sorry. Right, so you got about two hundred to go. So with two fifty, I usually try to make a move and get to the front. Yeah. Um so when I come to the bend, I'm on, I'm pretty strong if I'm holding the lead. Yeah. So I try to get in the lead before the last hundred. So you're trying to get on the bend, you're trying to be in the lead, lead coming yeah. to the last hundred. Yeah. Without well, swinging out too wide. Yeah. Okay. And then just kind of stay in control. And just Is it go. strategic like whenever on the bends to take over people or to do it on the straightaways? Uh, no, it's strategic, man. So is it, would you rather, you'd rather do it on the bend than the straightaways? Uh, you'd rather do it on the bend if, if it means you don't have to go out too wide. So, oh, so, okay. Yeah. So that's why being top three is better. But if you're at the back, everyone's trying to go out wide. Yeah. And now you got to. You gotta kind of wait. You cover Otherwise, like three you more go meters all the way going through at the back, and then you're running. You're running so much more distance. Yeah, okay. So you, you get don't want to run more distance than you, you have. You get to, to 700 meters. You're in the lead. Yeah. How you feeling? You are going, whoa, boys. We it depends. Are on. So at Tokyo <laughs> final, I was in the lead, but yeah. I knew I was cooked. Yeah, okay. Because I was leading that race. Did you spend too much energy like on trying that. to get past people on the other bit? 
Yeah, I just I was leading the race. It never helps to kind of sometimes lead a race too. Yeah, kind of. It was a slow race, and these guys were ready to go. Mm. Um, but in like the semi and the heat, I was like, I was kicking out. So I was I was in like third place, and I was coming, yeah. coming, coming. So when I got in the front, I was like, man, I got this. Yeah. In the heat, although I came second, I slowed down because you only need to come top three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, but it was Australian record, and then I think that that's what built the hype. It's like you're that's a massive down. deal, man. Yeah. Well, like, congrats to you. That's fucking. Yeah. That's pretty cool to be like, yo, I've cut the record in Australia. Like, yeah. And I think it's Australia Oceanic. I think, Am yeah, I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I right in saying yeah. that? Yeah. So you, you can you can tack on a few countries in there. Yeah. <laughs> tack on a few countries in there. Yeah. Um, so okay. So do you believe on our Because I'm I'm so interested in the little meticulous things that happen in running, right? Like, because yeah. a lot of people don't understand that. Like, whenever they think, oh, he just runs 800 meters since the fastest guy went. So it's like, no, there is a certain like game plan whenever you go into something. Like, yeah, it's not it's who not you're necessary, running against everything else, especially championships. It's not necessarily always the fastest guys wins. Mm. So at the Olympics, the guy, the fastest guy in the field, almost didn't make the final, and then the final, really? I think he came he came last. So wow, like, okay. Because so much, so much of the Olympic final is about um, composure, um, your focus. Because when you get to a final, like in a, in our sport, there's only 48 people that can run the 800 meters of the Olympics, and then yep. it gets cut down to eight people in the final. So that's like the eight people best in the world. Mm. So everyone's fit there. Everyone's got the same kind of training. It's like what differentiates between the top three and the guys at the back is. It's who can put it together. Yeah, and who can put it together yeah, on the day. It's, and it's not like, who's the fastest. It's not wow. who. Like if you're fast, you got an advantage, obviously. But like if you're if you're the fastest and you're panicking and you're shaking at the start line, yeah. you ain't going to perform. Is it is, is height a good thing? Like if you're taller, can I, could I run a faster 800 because I'm taller? <laughs> um, what do you reckon I run an 800 at? <laughs> <laughs> we might actually have to test it out. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> My 3K time trial is not good, Peter. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm always the back of the pack when it comes day one of preseason. It's not beautiful. <laughs> What's your 3K time? 3K time trial would be like, no, sorry, 2K time trial is like seven, I think. Seven, yeah. seven, oh five on a good day. Yeah, you do, though. You had a good day. <laughs> I always say, look, coming back from off season, if you end up behind me in the 2K time trial, you got a bit of work to do, my <laughs> brother. You got a bit of work to yeah, do. We should, <laughs> we should set one out. Oh. We should do a relay, right? I don't... I, no, you should do a okay, relay. I'm in on this, all right. You, you and Nathan... So yeah. you go, you go run four, Kruger, um, four Nathan each, Kruger, sorry, yeah, yeah, four well, each. No. So you, you run one over my ass. Yeah, no, you you run a four hundred. Yeah, and then you I'll, I'll do four hundred. He does a four hundred. You do an eight, and I do an eight. You would still murder us, man. I don't. You guys, you would kill us, dude. No. One forty four. I don't even think I could run a lap in no. one forty four, bro. No. <laughs> I, think, I think you guys. Yeah. One forty four. I'm injured at the moment, so this might have to hold off for a so, bit. But, uh, so you, you guys obviously want to be in one forty four shape, so. Uh, 144 is 52 seconds. So you and Nath, if you guys both average 52 seconds- That's a dead sprint for me. (laughs) That is a dead sprint for 400 meters for me. uh, I'm more of like a 10 meter kind of sprint guy. I'm not really- (laughs) Well, so once you're running a 400 in like 60 seconds- (laughs) Oh, probably on a good day. Actually. I haven't <laughs> ran a 400 in a very long time. I ran, it, it'd like, be we, quite interesting. Oh, I don't know. I feel like I'd be <laughs> top end of this. I'll be on the, the worst end of the spectrum as far yeah. as it goes to speed. Um, so, so height doesn't actually help. No, no, it helps. I think um, the is there like a, like is there a, like and I don't swimming. There's like a perfect body for like swimming. You know, like yeah. the tall, big shro- like big shoulders, everything. Is there like a running like yeah, anatomy that's best? Most of the 800 runners now are quite tall. So mm. the world record like what's 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 average height for an eight hundred runner? Oh, they all differentiate, but um, about maybe six foot. Six foot, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, this they're getting quite tall these days. Yeah. Um, I'm probably in that in that final in Tokyo. I don't know if there's there's only probably two people shorter than me. Really? Yeah. Wow. Okay, I might have a chance here. <laughs> 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 you really try to but, but, reel me in here. I'm like, nah, yeah, but, but, but also, there's no seven foot guys there either. All right, I'm gonna break that barrier, baby. I'll break that barrier. Seven foot. Yeah. All right, what, what's, where, where's the next? Where's the next Olympics? Yeah. Um, Paris. Paris. I'm go. coming. It's I'm, I think I'm probably better at maybe like lawn bowls or something. Yeah, I'm, more more bar. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a, reach the Olympic sports outside of the Commonwealth. You might, you but, might have a chance. Uh, I think you're really <laughs> pumping me up here, pal. I think you've got me beat just by just barely, just barely, mate, just barely. Um, okay. We'll, we'll go into Olympics. I want to talk about this because I love the Olympics. The Olympics are obviously massive. Now, mentality, the Olympics is your grand final. Like, and yeah. it happens every four years. So like you have four years of just prepping, prepping, prepping to do these things. I'm sure you've been asked this a million times. Don't get me wrong. But like, it's so interesting because I don't feel like there's anything else in the world. You only get to be on that big stage every four years. And there is a world every you know two years in between that and all that. Yeah. But that is all eyes on you from like across the world. 
Yep. Now, how is that feeling representing a whole country? Like I, I want to get Julie Bishop on here because yeah. she was a foreign minister and she represented the country yeah. from like a political standpoint. Like yeah. how cool is it to be like, yo, I'm wearing the green and gold. Like I'm representing my country as one of the best that's doing this. Like the, f- the first game you'll always remember. It's mm. just like, it's just like the most powerful um, experience you have. One, you get the uniform and you're just like super excited. Like cool you're ripping through all those uniforms, trying to get as much as possible. Um, Two, and then you actually get there and you're like, shit, like we're here. Yeah. Like representing a it's country. It's happening. Like this it's, is it's like, like happening. life goals then, is happening. And then three, like the pressures and, and the nerves behind it. It's like, all right, we're representing a country. That means there's a lot of people watching. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like, man, it's just the greatest experience ever. Especially because like we've spoken about background and we've spoken about culture. Yeah. It's like, well, and like you recently became a citizen. I saw. Yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I became a citizen, uh, what, 18 or 16 years ago. Yeah, okay. And then yep. 16 years on, you're like representing a country and you're fourth in the world. Kaz, and- this, how's that work? Because if you're from somewhere else, but you can represent yeah. a different country in the Olympics, correct? No, no, no. You have to be a citizen of that country. So you have to be a citizen. Once you're a citizen, so I'm a dual citizen in the US and yeah. Australia. Can I just pick? Yeah, you can pick. So I could be like, I could be the best. You can. What's a ridiculous sport well, in once, the Olympics? Well, once, so just something I can really do. But, but once you pick, much. you can't change for another two years. Another. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. yeah. So did you have to, well, I guess like technically you would be well, well, a citizen so early. Citizen. You would always I been. I don't have any other citizenship. Oh, really? I'm okay. Australian citizen, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I became Australian citizen in 2006. I've been Australian citizen. Yeah. Okay. Eight, so that's, yeah. yeah. You feel like a proper Australian. Yeah. 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 So, then, so you go and you represent your country. You get the, you rip out. Okay. Let's, you know, you rip out your, what's your brand? Uh, Adidas. 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 Adidas, Adidas. You rip out the Ad- Adidas stuff, you know, you get all brand new stuff, you know, and it's like, yeah. cause you are on the world stage. So like, it's yeah. kind of, you know, like everyone is now looking at you and you got this opportunity to kind of, not only from pers- personal perspective, from a brand's yeah. perspective, you get all their fresh gear, yeah. which is like, cool, man. It's I'm so always cool, like, man. so good. Hey, um, you rip through that and you got this hype and then you get to, you fly in. Let's, let's talk about Rio. You fly into Rio, you get into Olympic village, you finally get settled. Like, are you sleeping well? Like, I feel like I would just be nah, on edge. I'd sleeping. be like, just ready. I'd be like, man, this is, this is life goals, man. Like I'm living, man. I'm living. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're literally living until mm. the night before a race and then you're sitting there shitting yourself. <laughs> 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 up until then. Like I still remember Rio. I wake up, I wake up, I, I'd say 4am and I couldn't really? get back to sleep. Oh no. I could not get back to sleep at all. I was like that grand final day. Yeah, yeah, you just can't get you just, It's tough, man, because you're just, just thinking, thinking every you know, everything that might happen, you know? Like, yeah. you're just like, oh, man. I don't and know you're this like so be. unexperienced and everything. But mm. then fast forward to like Tokyo, I had, to, I had to put an alarm for my heat. Like, I was sleeping. Really? Like, you're baby, just cruising? Yeah. Like, I was I'm cruising. Like now, yeah. Yeah. But back then, man, I was shitting myself yeah. before the thing. And I was not sleeping well. Did you like, I know Rio was um, whenever Bolt yeah, yeah. won, yeah? Yeah, yeah. What was, did, did you watch that live? Yeah, I got to watch that. Was that like a big inspiration for you, I feel like? Yeah, more so I think there was the four hundred record world record was broken there too. So yeah. you just get to see these amazing Did athletes. they break the eight hundred um record? Uh the eight hundred uh oh gosh, relay. Um, was that broken there? I can't nah, remember. Nah, nah, nah. But it was the four hundred that was probably the most impressive broken, yeah. broken there. And you just get to see that and like wow. Just crazy, eh? That's crazy, these, these That dudes. was like, uh, the, that Olympics, I feel like, was what brought track and field on a real, yeah. like, yeah, it's real next stage kind of thing, you know, and like now, next level. And now these Americans are, like, even now coming back from the world chance from America this year, mm. like, hands down, the best race was probably the 400 hurdles, the woman. Yeah. This, this Sydney McLaughlin, um, she's just dominating. She's, mm. she's running, like, quick. Like, I think she might expose, expose me a 400 flat. You really? Know, racer. Because yeah. like, she had like a split on the relay of like 47, which is quick for girls. Wow. That is moving. That's insane. That is moving. That's and then, popping. Yeah. So, so yeah, you get to watch all of that. And then you also, the the good thing is you kind of walk around the Olympic Village and you got all different athletes and you're trying to guess what they do. Just right, from, okay. Yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. all the tall guys are like, okay, they, they must be basketball cool, players. Yeah. But then the trick is the other, the other athletes are like, man, this is actually hard. Cause you got everyone of every different sport. <laughs> you just be looking, it's like a game. It's like, you know, you go out and you're like, it's like, I go to the bar every once in a while I'll play this game. You know, like, I wonder what he does for a living, you know? And then you awkwardly go up to him and be like, get out, mate, how you going? He's like, oh, good. And I was like, so what's your job? <laughs> Accountant. Yes, I knew it. Uh, so you're doing that. So you jump around. So I'm like, what's, um, hypothetically, let's think of sports here. Like what could be a sport I can maybe become an Olympian at? 
Um, We're trying to break a Guinness Book of World Record on this show. I'm not sure. If someone can throw a Guinness Book of World Record, we can beat. But is there any kind of like, I feel like like curling, maybe curling. something like that, you know, yeah. like, or even it can be, it can be summer or winter. I know you're a summer man, but. Well, from your heart, you got to be basketball. Got to be basketball. Okay. Be That's my basketball. best chance. Basketball. Okay. Be basketball. I'll hit up um, Luke Longley or something. Yeah. Sort it out. We'll get it onto it. Um, it's got to be bold. The problem is the Australian basketball team's actually good. It's so <laughs> like, good. So they're they're so to good. actually be decent at basketball. And they're going to be. <laughs> They're gonna be so good in um in Paris too. Nah, well, they won't be the best. Yeah, they right. won't be the best. You're you're, oh, you're dual citizen now, so I oh, know I gotta go fifty fifty. <laughs> or either way, I think one of them's gonna win. So I'm kind of like happy either way. But yeah. they did break my heart before I became a citizen. They came, U.S. came over here, and Australia beat them at Marvel Stadium. Yeah, and I've never copped so much shit leaving a stadium. <laughs> and I've played a lot of AFL games, and I've never copped it like that. Everyone yeah. was just talking absolute dribble. It was like the first time they beat them in so long, but um. It would be huge if Australia wins. It would be massive. It would be massive. But, but I mean, like, as uh, you said, the, the US is- Yeah, they're always kind of- It's a pure numbers game. I always yeah. say like for Australia though, like the amount of people that live here, the amount of like gold medals and just medal like tallies in general is- We do really well in sport. Beyond anyone else in the world. Yeah. Like you talk about swimming and like we, swimming is insane. Like I don't know why, but like here, everyone's just a gun swimmer. Like, every- Everyone lives around an ocean. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess everyone, everyone sense, learns Mason. to swim. <laughs> and, and the other thing is, it's so competitive. So yeah. to make an Olympic team, you have to be the best of the best. 100%, so like, yeah. The best competition is here. So I think that helps when you create like a high performance. So like, yeah. um, so for example, like the 800 now. So I'm running. So if anyone's trying to beat me in Australia, they're, they're going to be going to the Olympics. Mm. And that's how you like, you create that performance, high performance stuff. And and I think swimming, they've been doing it for years. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. Is there anyone you train with right now that's like pushes you? Because obviously you're at the be- you're the best in Australia. Like yeah. Everyone knows that. Is there anyone that like you look at and it's coming up and it's like, man, he's pushing me to make sure I'm still at my best every single time? Yeah. Um. I think jo- Joseph Dang for sure. Yeah. He's um, Tumble Boy as well. South oh, Sydney's background. Huge. Um, Tumble Boy's getting a little bit of a, 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 little bit of a yeah, former, shout out on the for, pod. Former Australian record holder. So like um, yeah. it's both of us, one and two in which is pretty cool story like in like in the history of australia period one and two in the in the 800 and wow, that's cool and we both moved to Toowoomba in 2004 so, oh okay so you've so, known each other for a long time yeah we've known each other for yeah, a long yeah. time and is he a basketball player he played a bit of ball too huh? so yeah, it's like okay. it's quite cool like yeah. i think like cause especially when you have three people who can only represent australia yeah and then you have two from like Toowoomba or, or like very Australia. like rare it's very rare yeah, yeah. and two like of the fastest people in Australian history, it's pretty yeah. cool. Any um, any advice for anyone out there that's like looking to be an 800 meter the runner? next Peter Ball? Yeah, keep training. Keep training. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> now come come do a session, and then are you asking me to do a session or someone else? Because I don't think I'll make it past like the first five minutes. I wouldn't make the warm up of your session. I feel like dude. yeah, we do two k jog warm up. Two k jog warm up, man. That is my full effort. Is two k. But only that four k. 4K pace, so you'd be all right. Okay, 2K is a 4K pace. So let's say you're running a marathon, right? You could run a marathon, I'm assuming, just because you you're have you a natural born athlete and you run for a living. What would you run a marathon in, you think? A marathon? Yeah, 42Ks. It's a I, decent trick. I wouldn't even want to run a marathon. Wouldn't want to run a marathon ever. No, Not even whenever you're done. That's far because like, so one of my hardest sessions is probably six by K and six, six, six by one kilometer reps with so like yeah okay yeah 90 yeah. second rest and i'm averaging about three minutes a k and like the elite elite um marathon runners they're doing that non-stop oh they're nuts that's nuts i went to new york city marathon recently and i saw the guys and how far <laughs> they were from like the other people that were running it, and i was like this is just a totally you, different human like you do that you don't understand until you do a session and you're like no nah, these guys been doing that yeah the whole way without stopping and and i'm a professional athlete and I'll still struggle with that session. But you're different, but people are like, you're yeah, different yeah. type of running. Different like, type of running dude, that's 800 meters is a lot smaller than like 42 yeah. guys where you got to be so endurance. Like you're a lot quicker than they would be over 800 I wouldn't want to do sure. a marathon. I would, I would not, not for the experience. Not for- I'm trying to do a marathon whenever I retire. I was kind of trying to suck you into this, you know, and like, you know, maybe. <laughs> Come do an 800, then we can negotiate a marathon. Hey, the two 400s. <laughs> oh, hey, we're going to make this happen. <laughs> yeah. Beginning of the season, we're going to get you down at the pause. And uh, me and Nathan are going to. 
Yeah. We're going to embarrass ourselves. I was going to say we're going to show you up. I was like, we're just going to embarrass nah, ourselves. He was training pretty there. well over in Europe. He was moving around the track. Was he? Yeah. A little feedback the, for the, all Krugs. The, yeah. The boy oh, it was, wasn't just a party over there nah, for him. the boy was actually doing his work. Yeah, well, he got, he got to play. You know, He got to play in finals. <laughs> it was worth it. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely legend. Absolute legend. Well, I see this. Any, um, any setbacks along the way in your career? Yeah, probably missing teams. I hated missing mm. teams. Um, when was that? Uh, so the first team I missed out was probably... Well, juniors yeah. and probably like I was mad, but it was like, it's your first year mm. in the sport, but I still, I thought I should be good enough to make that team. And then yeah. missing out of Commonwealth games. Um, when was that? 20, 2015, maybe. Yeah. I can't remember. 14, 14. And then missing out of world champs, 2015. And yeah. then finally like getting a breakthrough and making the Olympic team yeah. in 2016. But like, I, I thought I could have got some experience on the way to the Olympics, but I kept missing these teams and it was like, it sucked. It what was, sucked. The, was the reason? You just like, no, as quick as the other guys were there? Or like, yeah, it was, it was still just developing like, kind of and like, those guys better than you. And, yeah. Did um, you ever have any injuries or anything along the way? Like, yeah, Commonwealth 2018 mm. um, in the Gold Coast. Yeah. I was really motivated to compete in Australia in front of home crowd and then I got a stress fracture. Oh, geez, yeah. That was tragic. Oh, uh, that was be so like just oh home crowd too home crowd too so I was just mm. watching on TV so oh. Oh. but the good thing is I had teammates competing there and it was yeah cool. so yeah. you still like did you go up there no 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 so you stay home in Perth yeah stay home yeah yeah okay um we'll talk about the Commonwealth Games just passed yeah silver medal yeah pretty freaking impressive your boy was off at the edge of his yeah, seat yeah 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 edge <laughs> of his seat edge of his seat mate <laughs> give us a bit of a, a rundown how that was Birmingham. Recently, Birmingham, yeah, correct. Yeah. Uh, how was that? How was that compared to Olympic Village, a Commonwealth Games? Oof. Like, I know, like, obviously, like, there's less was, less countries and everything else, but, like, yeah. what's comparatively, like, the big difference between the two? Numbers, for sure. Yeah. And Commonwealth was a little bit split because of COVID. They didn't finish the village. So we had- Oh, really? Half of the teams were in, in what were we? We're in the University of Birmingham. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest campus. But then they had different- sports at different places. So it wasn't everyone in one village. Wow, okay, um, yeah. So it's somewhat spread out. So it was a little bit spread out. But the best thing about it, hands down, was the English get after this sport. So yeah, I always say the love Commonwealth it, should stay in Australia or, or yeah. the UK because they draw so many crowds. Like, it was like the stadiums was full during the heats. Like when I was running that heat and I won my heat, the stadium was packed and I was like, yeah, yeah okay. you usually don't have that. Um, and people like sometimes they don't even understand athletics. They just love sports mm. and they just come and watch. It's, it's pretty cool. And then the final was unreal. Everyone it's electric. Was there. It's electric, man. Oh, Especially man. having to do a lap around after you, after you win a medal with the flag. Yeah. Get the flag and get go around. And like, and how cool is that? That's, that's like, that's awesome. Yeah. Man, I saw Zach Tui do after he won the grand final of yeah. like, you know, his Irish flag. And I was like, man, that is sick. It's so like, cool. Re- like proper representing like yeah. where are you from and like just feeling like you're giving back to that community that built the person that yeah. you are today, you know? That's like, awesome, isn't it? Yeah. So that was probably just awesome because we didn't have any of that. Like Tokyo, we've we've raced with no crowd at all. So yeah. Kind of, now I'm so. going to ask that after. We'll, we'll finish this Birmingham story because I want to know yeah. more about um, a bit of how that was and the mentality going into that. And like you, you smash the preheat and then you go into the final and you end up getting silver. Like what was, what was, what were you at at 300 meters? What was the mentality at 300 meters? Man, I was so <laughs> disappointed mm. in that, in that race because I just had in my head, like I'm going to get that gold medal and yeah. I was really confident. So of course you don't, you don't really show it because you feel like you want a medal and yeah. you represent the country and you're still so successful. I understand. Still like a like medal, as any athlete, a medal, like but, you have um, that drive to be as the best. Any athlete, you wanted to be the best. That's, yeah. that's what you had in there. Um, but yeah, as we said before at 300, um, I knew exactly where I lost that race. Really? I knew exactly where, like with 250, I usually make the move and I just go to the front with 250 yeah. to go. And at 300, I was just there. And for a split second, I thought, nah, stay back. And then that's when I lost the race. Really? Because he made that move instead and then it was gone. Like you couldn't catch him. What was the move? Just like to go, just, like a G just, jump. Just accelerate. Yeah, once you got that of... jump, once you get that jump, it's pretty hard. And you usually like doing that jump. You kind of just shock people and you just go. Yeah, okay. And then if they try to respond too quick, they're overstride and they're tightening up and everything yeah. like that. Uh, which is, I think, and the Kenyans are great at racing tactical. They get to yeah. the front and they pull the handbrake. Um, really? Yeah, they pull the handbrake because whoever's at the front, it's a slow race. The bit in control of like yeah. kind of the way everyone else paces off them. Is there a bit of drafting? Like, do you kind of draft? Like, is yeah, that a thing? In a, in a fast race, but in a slow race, yeah. you don't want to be stuck at the back. Yeah. Because everyone's still got so much energy. Mm. Like, so to, 
Birmingham was a slow race. Um, so was the Olympic Because the heat, you were quicker than the actual final. Yeah, the heat was actually quicker. Um, yeah. The heat, we went through 50, 52. Yeah. The final, we went through 55. 55, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was a slow race. And and who won the race is the top two that uh, came ended up coming one and two. Because no one else is going to come from the back and really yeah. do both of us. It's so tough to go around, like it's, you said. Like, it's so tough to go around. Yeah. So like with 250, man, I was just disappointed because... I was like, man, I should have won that race. Yeah. And there's like, and for the first time, there's like no excuses. You've, you're an experienced athlete now. You've come forth last year. Mm. Uh, like before that, you can kind of excuse it. It's like your first final, your first this and that. Yeah. But now you're, you're at the Commonwealth Games and you're looking good in the heats. Um, and I love the hype and everything that was created yeah. around it. So I, ju- I just wanted to get it. And, and you like, you like dream about that before you sleep and you think about mm. it. And, and then you're expecting a gold medal and the US silver. Uh, what at the same time was the first international medal. So yeah, I was wrapped you be to have super that. proud of it. And man, then seriously. Had, and then you had the crowd there, you had your coach and manager and and then afterwards you just kinda go out and enjoy some time with your friends. Yeah. And then you kinda just let it be. Because the medals it, yeah. the medals and everything doesn't really It's not like, what it's about. It's not really what's about at the end. That stuff's cool, but like the experience is what it's about. It, the experience the journey, the everything else is it's like it. what you actually remember. You can that medal like Man, I've won some stuff in my life. I have no idea where the hell that is. Yeah, that's is. what I said. Like, I'm where never, would you metal be right now? Do you even I have know? No idea. So I have exactly. No idea. I'm really, like, you're like, nah, really like that's cool. Like it's something to show that that happened. But like, yeah. I don't need that. Like it's yeah. more for other people to show. But like yeah. for you, it's like, nah, I lived and breathed that experience. I don't yeah. need anything from it. Like, exactly right. And you just so you wouldn't know where the metal is. No, I actually don't know where it is right now. <laughs> <laughs> Surely, mom and dad's house <laughs> or something like that, right? <laughs> no, I think somewhere here. Oh, that's gold. You know what? I almost left it in. It just when I was leaving Europe, um, yeah. and my manager was driving me to the airport, and he said, "Oh shit, do you want your medal?" I was like, "Oh." You totally almost forgot about it. I almost forgot about it because after Birmingham, I gave him the medal, mm. and and then because I went, I went on a holiday and I went whatever, yeah. And I came back, I completely forgot about the medal, and then he, he had to remind me. Otherwise, wow. he would have he would probably be bringing it back. He's still in Europe, so I wouldn't see it. You wouldn't him. even see it, yeah, yeah, which wouldn't even matter. Nah. But I think a lot of people have that like association with like, you know, like people yeah. should love medals and cups and trophies and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but of like, course. There's, um, there's those extrinsic motivations, but I think internally, like the motivation to be the best and stuff like that means so much more. It's so true, yeah. man. We had to go, it's totally, <laughs> really like comedian Peter Hellier came on. He talked about yeah. that. I talked about the journey was more important than the actual destination. And like yeah. every person I talked to, it's so true that is successful and like is going to be amazing. And like, if not already, and that journey and the idea that like, you know, material stuff of winning is great. Yeah. But like, that's not what sticks with you. No. Like that stuff gets put in a cabinet and shut away. You know, yeah. like the stuff you talk about is what actually stays with you. Exactly. You don't even, like someone's, uh, I went and showed the medal to my family in Perth and someone said, oh, the medal doesn't actually say 800. I didn't even know. I didn't even look at the medal. Didn't say 800. Like, yeah. Was it just like a generic just, medal? Just a generic medal. Like, I didn't even know. Oh, really? Like, Does it even, even have your name engraved on the back or anything? No, nah, no, nah, it doesn't. Um, bullshit. And then, and I, was like, <laughs> and I, was like, I was like, I didn't even know that until, wow. like, until like I got back to Perth. I had no idea. You I just never even had time. You didn't even look at it. You, you, you just like, oh, I wore it for a bit and that was it. That's it. Yeah, wore it at this presentation, put it in a box and didn't really. Did it, is it actually made of silver? Do you know this? I think so. Okay. Well, let's I, just say so, just to I, make the like Olympic come well. So, yeah. <laughs> just so you feel better about it. It's made of silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll go to, to Tokyo. Now, Tokyo, unique experience for myself. Yeah. What was your, like, man, everyone was locked down here. Everyone was like, yo, <laughs> sport, give me something to live for. And your boy shows up, I was like, yo, <laughs> yeah. Put you on my back. Put you on my back yeah. on an international level. <laughs> How I, was I that, yeah, man? Yeah. Like, the crazy is we like traveling in COVID and wasn't, wasn't sure if it was going to happen. The Tokyo yeah. public wasn't 100% on at times and like, oh, like, oh, like aware of it and wanting to do it. Yeah. Like, it was just chaos, man. Like, just chaos. <laughs> yeah. And like, you experienced Rio and it was like a proper Olympics. And then you go to Tokyo, which is just like this quasi asterisk of like, this is what an Olympic experience is, you know? Like, what yeah. was the. What was the feeling going into it? Like you would have been, were you nervous to travel? Like, was it nervous to be there? Like, um, were you not sure how it was going to be like kind of looked was, at from a you know public standpoint? Yeah. So we actually told not to travel because of just reduce the risk of COVID. Yeah. Because we usually go to Europe and do European season before going over to Olympics. When I said, I said, nah, like I did a session. This is how confident I was mm. for Tokyo. I did a session in Brisbane and I was like, man, I'm in shape. And I, and I messaged my agent and coach i was like no we can't stay here because mm. i was competing around australia i was like no we need proper competition 
we need to go versus the best in the world who are going to be versing there. Like, let's just apply for an exemption and, and go to Europe. Like yeah. we risk if you get COVID, whatever it is. And and we actually went to Europe and I remember racing in France. I got on the track and I raced against against all these Europeans and like all these, like the best obviously. And, and I won the race so easily. And I'm like, really? and after that race, I'm like, there is no way there's more than eight people in this God, world yes. that can be faster than me right now. God, the feeling uh, being like, we're the best feeling, in the world. That like, feeling really, is like, oh, man, that feeling is like, we just did that so easy mm. um we're gonna have a good olympics hell yeah we're gonna have a great olympics and I, that's why i was so confident at the olympics because I mean, i've done all the work and i've raced the whole year and like i knew if i could get my keep my emotions together and nerves together yeah and handle the pressure whatever it was and good thing is i was laid back i didn't there was no pressure like after breaking the strand record in the heat and everyone going crazy like i was like man it was chilled and then the semi-finals like there was so much hype like yeah and the context like i went to the olympics with with I think 7,000 followers after the, uh, they just kept growing. 7,000, oh 7, God, you'd be at like 500 by now, bro. They, <laughs> they, just, they just kept growing. So by the final, I was in like 48,000. So it just, Far that out. was the biggest jump. Yeah. So there was so much hype and, and like you could see so much hype, but the good thing is you can control the hype because you're just in social media. You just turn it off. You can just, just turn not it off. Your phone. And, uh, whatever so it is. Easy, and yeah. you can accept whatever you want and you can turn yeah. it off whenever you want. Did you do that going into the Olympics? Or like kind of nah, I was kind of enjoying it. Or are you like, nah, nah. I'm, gonna, I'm I was living the experience, bring everyone along. One night I was sitting there and I told my, um, I told my coach, I was like, man, because you see other athletes around you and, you and you're so invested in what they do and how they perform good and stuff like that. And so many turn off their social media yeah. um, to stay calm. And then I was like, should I do that? I was like, no, nah, I'm not them. Like, I'm mm. calm. I didn't, I didn't need to. Turn as long it as off. you can handle it, yeah, like, yeah, it. some I people love can. Some I didn't, can't. I didn't want to turn it off. Yeah. So I just, I just kept it, and I was lying to some people when I could, and yeah. and it just got, it kind of catch your mind off of things, and rather than just sit in bed and stuff yeah. like that, especially because Tokyo is so dry with the Olympics. What else are you gonna do? Yeah. Oh, it's like, man. I think like whenever you have those unique experiences in life, you like want to capture them, and you want to mm. have like you want to share with people. Like, yeah. I feel like you know. I've lived some pretty amazing things, done some amazing things and so have you. And you come to the realization that things don't mean as much if you don't have the ability to share them with others. Mm -hmm. And like, whether it be social media, whether it be family, or whether it be friends, whatever it is, like those are the moments that you kind of like love the most. Yeah. You might have a hundred thousand people in the stadium, but there's like, you're performing for four people sometimes. Yeah. And it's like, those are the people, you know, you'll catch up with after and like got your back and you want to like kind of you want to perform for them because they've supported you through all the tough times, you know? Yeah. And that's so cool. Like there's not many people have that opportunity to do that. And plus like, um, like why would you go to the biggest stage and do different things? Like mm. I've never turned off my social media during a normal races. Um, why would you change it? Yeah. Why would you change it? Yeah. I've never cut my family out just to focus on a race. Mm. Like why would I just go to Olympic games and say like, Oh, I need, I need a break from you guys. Like, yeah, I think that would create even more. Anxiety around yeah. it, I feel like and you're hyping yeah. it up to be even bigger so just, than it is. Just keep everything normal. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So you get there, very different. No Olympic Village. You kind of stuck in like your own somewhat like quasi area. Like how was it? No, there was, how was, it was, a, there was a village. It was just everything in the village wasn't like Tokyo. So were you allowed to hang out with other countries? You could, but it was very hard. Like Australia was pretty strict. Yeah. Um, and and I think athletes were pretty. Was, some of them were pretty scared to catch COVID nervous, because pe yeah. people were catching COVID. So like, you didn't want to go all the way to Olympics and, oh, that'd be terrible, and yeah. catch COVID. And the worst, if you're not even sick and you can't compete. Mm. So everyone kind of just was sensible and keeping to themselves and, and whatnot. So it's just a bit strange. So it wasn't a community vibe of going to get dinner together and like hanging out and stuff like that. Like there's yeah. kind of this like anxiety around the place of like, I don't want to be Except, too close to anyone. I think it actually made, sure the, what's going but on. I think like, it made the Australian team a bit closer because usually you can go out and hang out with everyone else. Yeah. But now we just hung around with the Australian team. So I think yeah, okay. the community and the connections got stronger within the Australian team because that's your building. So yeah. I was hanging out with the basketball players. I was hanging out. I got to know so many more Australian athletes than I did previous Olympics because yeah, you that. were there. We had a coffee machine, everyone there in the morning. We watched each other compete on the big TV. So you had like friends from the Australian team. You just didn't really meet didn't anyone. Didn't go outside, outside. of that somewhere you didn't really as much. Yeah, too much yeah. Outside. Yeah, you stayed within your country. Who was the one person you got close with on that trip? Um, probably my boy Duop, Reith. Yeah. Uh, we, cause he's a Perth boy and, um, knew him yeah. beforehand or met him up there. Yeah. I, I knew him yeah. beforehand. Uh, never really hung out though. Cause we yeah, always, can't. he played basketball in the U S and then he played in Europe and, and then he was, yeah, we never really crossed paths too much. So, mm. and it was like, great. Like with the Olympic games, let's, let's hang out. Play a bit of FIFA. 
Uh, nah, I don't have PlayStation there. <laughs> got PlayStation there. Yeah. Locked in. Locked in. Yeah. Um, okay, well then, so you go there and it's like quite, somewhat isolated, but not too much when it comes to Olympics. Now, was was there, I know like the Tokyo public was very kind of like, there's like from our image in Australia, right? So like I'm sitting at home watching TV because I got nothing else to do because I'm locked in my house. I'm sitting there looking at it and I'm like, awesome, we've got the Olympics. It's doing it. Like we're yeah. actually going forward with it. Like it's this crazy, you know, get together of people on the like, international stage that we didn't think was going to be possible. Yeah. And they put this whole thing together. Was there like, um, was there that feeling that was like something very special that you were kind of doing something more than just sport? Like you were entertaining the world in a very tough time in a lot of people's lives? Yeah. And um, I mean, it was massive credit to Tokyo because they took a massive risk mm. to allow the games to continue. Because, you know, with COVID and everything, no one wanted that many people into their country at the time. They've only recently just opened their borders. Yeah. Like, like I mean, Australia, there was no one. We Australians struggled to get back home. Yeah. So for Tokyo to take that and just let everyone live their dreams. I mean, these are athletes that trained for years and years to get to the games. And then imagine if Tokyo just said, like, it's too risky to <sighs> take those games. So I think it was massive respect to them. And, and there shouldn't be any complaints whether, like, okay, we weren't allowed to leave the village and... And it wasn't as a great experience. I mean, we went there at the end of the day to perform mm. and you put everything aside and you go there performing. And I think and it was actually a successful game in terms of performance. Like the basketball team did great. Australia, yeah. Australia did really good. It really well, um, yeah. The Australian track team did awesome. Uh, so it was just the opportunity to perform. It didn't change. Like, I mean, there's no crowds, but um, usually- Did you feel the difference? No crowds? Yeah, Whenever I played in front of no crowds, it was a bit of like, it's, uh, it's, a bit weird, <laughs> it's yeah. like a practice game of it. Like, I'm not really going on. <laughs> It's a bit weird, but usually you you um you learn to block out the crowd. Yeah, but it's I'm, so yeah, much I'm better so with crowd. Like Birmingham yeah. was so much better than Tokyo. And yeah. then when I was watching the races online with like Bruce commentating, yes, and, Brucey um, and Tamsin, I was like, man, I wish I was I was just sitting there watching. Yeah. It was so much better to watch on TV because you had um, Bruce commentating and stuff like that. But when you were there running, yeah. it was so quiet. Weird, eh? Hey. So Did weird. you at least have like other Australians cheering you on and stuff, or was it just yeah, like yeah, that was dead, a good thing. That was that was one like, of the most probably the most powerful moments I've had is yeah. the final was so hyped and you had, I've posted a photo on Twitter and I think I wrote, um, Australia, thank you. And there's yeah. a photo of all my teammates and they're holding different signs and, so good. and it was sick. Like you could hear them because the stadiums were yeah. that quiet. You can actually hear someone screaming your name. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is dope. Same, it was like, quiet, yeah. yeah. Oh, so man, that was so cool. eerie almost at times, right? Like, yeah. kind of final, feel like there should be hype here. And there should and be it's hype. It's like but, the world is watching, but none of them are here. <laughs> like, yeah. But I got to watch um, US versus um, Australian basketball. Yeah. And I actually enjoyed the stadiums being quiet because you could hear the players What's talking. Going on? You could yeah. hear everything. So it was like, wow, it's pretty cool. That's too. what you hear. Like, people don't realize it's like what the actual stuff it's, is. You can only, you can hear things on this, like, on on the field yeah but like whenever you get to like the stands you can't actually hear it. it's kind yeah. of a weird thing of like yeah. this kind of somewhat of a barrier of like kind of um, audio but if you're on like right next to it you can hear everything you can hear everything and that was kind of cool in an AFL standpoint but then they started doing the crowd noise level up now. <laughs> yeah yeah like, they put that up there's hey. a few boys dropping F-bombs I think and they're kind of like let's put some crowd noise in this please <laughs> yeah. we need something else <laughs> yeah. um, but no it's, it's awesome man I think like it's a credit to you man like you, you seriously were such a, a an absolute star when it came to that and uh, you know provide so much hope and I think like just you know capability for us to move on from this whenever you were doing it and it's a credit to you I, I know I gained a lot from watching you man I was like fucking so impressed and I was like man this is so good like this yeah. guy's killing it he's representing the country so well and I was like so I wasn't even an Australian citizen yet and I was so yeah. proud I was like man this guy's doing it man he's doing it right you know so yeah. uh, massive credit to you man um, but yeah, it's just, it's amazing to have you on, man. It's amazing to get to know you better. Like, you're an absolute legend. You've done so many amazing things, and I'm excited for the future. Like, yeah. wh what's next? What's next for you? I mean, we might as well start building up Paris to your Yes, to your sir. Uh, but we got I might come. <laughs> you come. When is it? Uh, 2024. June or like? Yeah, around July. Oh, gosh, I'll have to be July. retired then. Uh, <laughs> question marks. <laughs> question marks. Uh, Paris. Okay. Paris. Yes. Uh, but Budapest next year, world champs. Budapest. I could do, when is that? What time um, are you? Um August. Also in season. <laughs> also in season. <laughs> I won't make Buddha Pass. I'll try to make Paris, brother. Uh, I'm excited. It would be great, man. Uh, but in all honesty, seriously, 
Oh, congratulations. You absolutely killed it, man. You've, you've represented the country so well. We're all behind you. We're all really excited about the future for you. And, um, don't drink too many of those Fantas before you race, please. Um, uh, uh, Yes. (laughs) We're tagging Fanta. Fanta. What's the, what's the watch sponsor? What do we got? And then what do we got? How do you say Adidas or Adidas? (laughs) Any others we're going to drop over here? They're going to be happy with this. We're going to tag them all in a photo. Voost. Voost. Yeah. Voost. I like new. that. Yes. Yeah. New. New. Yeah. They're going to love the little shout out. Uh, thanks everyone for sponsoring this great man and um, representing the country so well. And um, any other things you want to put out there in the sphere? Any, uh, you, can, um, you can book him online through his website for interviews, correct? Interviews, speaking gigs. Speaking gigs um, for your companies and whatnot. Or, or you can literally come, come on a run. I'm always running around. Or you can watch us do an 800 meter relay yes. versus his 800 meter sprint. You, you can, you We're can, make you, can you can guess their time. We're going to put that. Yeah. Guess the time. It's going to be like yes. eight minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like we're going to get at, um, but now honestly, man, seriously, thanks so much for coming on. You're an absolute legend. Uh, I want to wish you all the best, man. I'll be watching very, very closely. And, um, it's an absolute honor to actually have you here and get to know you a bit better, bro. Appreciate it. Thank oh, you. Man. Anytime. Oh, oh, before we leave seven platforms, Spotify, Apple, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Ha! Bang. Damn, that was good. Have a great day.